and we're recording. Hi there, everyone. I'm Liz Eggleston, and I run Course Report, which is a resource for choosing the right coding bootcamp for you. And if you haven't used Course Report yet, then this is my one shameless plug. I do it in all of our videos. We have over 20,000 alumni reviews, Q and A's with alumni, and then bootcamp instructors, research, and videos like this one. And today I'm joined by Aaron Johnson, who took the Immersive Web Development Bootcamp at Flatiron School. So thanks so much for being here, Erin. No worries, thank you for inviting me. So recently we've been asking bootcamp graduates to sit down and share their screen and show us their final projects that they actually built during a coding bootcamp. Um, we get questions all the time about how far bootcamp will actually get you, especially if you're a beginner when you start. And these final projects are a really great way to see the proof. So Erin graduated from Flatiron School about one month ago, and she's now a web developer at ArtLogic, which we're going to talk about later. But I've got a lot of questions about the project that she built at Flatiron School, which is called Curatorial. So Erin, before we actually look at your project, I'm curious about what you were doing before you started at Flatiron School. What were you up to? Yeah. Um, so I had a little bit of a varied background. Um, I graduated from art school, the, the uh, Minneapolis College of Art and Design in 2007. Um, after that, I was working uh, in sort of like little marketing roles. I was doing a lot of freelance photography. And then um, a few years after that, I ended up doing a master's degree in museum education. Uh, here in London when I decided that I wanted to change over to kind of more of the administrative side of working uh, within the arts. Um, so I always had quite a big interest in the arts, but it was through some of my roles that I was doing here uh, for a, a few different museums and galleries here uh, in London that um, there were just some sort of frustrations with uh, kind of the capabilities of like what I was able to do because of the software restrictions and because I'd always really loved coding it was always something I was doing in my spare time uh, that I decided that I just wanted to make the change and so um, I spent a lot of time in my evenings doing uh, coding tutorials online I was going to meetups and then uh, when I finally decided I was ready, just applied and ended up getting in and here I am. <laughs> so did you research other coding boot camps or did you have your heart set on Flatiron School once you decided that you wanted to actually change your career? And I'm curious about your kind of research uh, process and why you ended up choosing Flatiron School. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I mean, my heart was pretty set on Flatiron School. I did look at General Assembly as well, um, because ever since they kind of first started up as an organization, I was quite interested in the courses that they had offered. I'd taken a few short courses with them as well. Um, but when I went on a campus tour at Flatiron, I was just really like blown away by the community. And then at the time when I was applying, I think they were the only school that had uh, funding as well. So it was a um, it was a loan through a company called EdAid where you would be able to pay for the course after you had finished it, which for me was like just such a huge um, uh, way to get over that initial barrier to actually apply because on you know an arts based salary to save up all the money for the tuition and all the money that I would be working or that I would be out of work during the time of the course, it just wasn't really feasible for me to, to undergo that um, at the time. So that was kind of what the, the main uh, sort of catalyst for me choosing Flatiron School was. And then you mentioned that you had been to meetups, you had done some tutorials on your own time. Um, once you actually applied to Flatiron School, how did you find the admissions process? Like, was it hard to get in? Um, did you have to do a coding challenge in order to actually get accepted to Flatiron School? Um, and did you feel prepared with your kind of own preparation? Did you feel prepared to actually get accepted? 
Yeah, um, it, it did feel very difficult <laughs> at the time to apply um, because I think since I was quite new to coding and I'm sure that probably a lot of viewers as well will find the process of doing the, the coding part of the interview a little bit of a challenge just because it's quite a new process. So it's a two part interview. So initially you have a phone uh, interview where they call it like a cultural fit. So it's kind of like the equivalent of a HR interview where they just kind of want to know a little bit more about you. What are your interests? What are your motivations for underdoing the course? And, um, and then the second interview is the actual coding challenge. So there was a set amount of um, so pre-coursework that you would need to do before you do that first um, uh, coding interview. And then during that, you go over how you solve the, the problem for the interview. So that was something that I had to kind of get used to talking through, like what was my thought process to actually solve this problem. And then also um, they did set out a couple of other little challenges, like how would you refactor this? Um, what if we change this to that? You know, what, what would you do next? And that um, did take me a little bit by surprise. And I kind of felt a little bit like, Oh, actually, <laughs> like just, um, yeah, it just made me quite nervous at the time, but um, it, it seemed to be all fine in the end. And I think, um, yeah, for some of the preparations beforehand, it does prepare you to kind of do the coding, but I'd also recommend um, doing some just like sitting with someone as well to kind of talk through like this is what I was thinking of solving it you know what would you do and that kind of gives you that practice of actually talking through it and then also um kind of learning how other people solve things as well and just to give you another perspective of like how else you would you would solve a coding challenge that's cool that's really great advice um to kind of practice that communication in addition to the like technical mm -hmm. kind of hard skills part of it um that's great cool so okay so you um you started Flatiron about was it about six months ago uh oh it was in august august uh, okay yeah quite recent oh <laughs> okay so you started Flatiron and what was the learning experience like at Flatiron you have gone through you know you've done a traditional undergrad degree you've gotten your master's you've been in many different types of classrooms yeah. um so i'm curious how you found this type of classroom and and if it kind of matched up with your learning style yeah um it was very very intense uh <laughs> they don't make any sort of uh false claims when they say that it's the boot camp like you're <laughs> you're very much in it during the time of the course um which i think they like they do they do prepare you for this and they say like it's gonna be really intense and the first week is the hardest and i definitely still felt that at the end of the first week like oh my gosh all of this knowledge all of this information how am i going to take this in but um by by the time that you're sort of in like week two or three you do start to get a little bit more used to um the pace of it that's definitely very different from a lot of like undergraduate and even master's courses where you'll have like one lecture and then you have time to sort of take everything in. It's much more spread out. Um, whereas this is a lot of information in quite a short period of time. So that was a little bit of, uh, of a learning curve to get back into that kind of pace. And um, throughout the course of the day, so generally you'll have, uh, every morning we'll have discussion questions. So you get used to talking to some of your classmates about like, again, how would you solve this problem? Do you remember this from the readings or this from uh, some of the coding homework that we had the night before? Um, most days we also had at least one lecture and then we'd also have lab work as well. So that's, during the day so that's the eight hours that you're there during the day and then um also have lab work and uh like take home assignments as well um so yeah it's quite intense you do also have some coding challenges as well um and then a project as well during each module that we had so you do one project per module so are there how many modules are there 
Yeah, there's, um, well, there's technically five. So it's one to four is like where you've got that kind of uh, more traditional, you spend the time doing like uh, coursework during the first week, first couple of weeks, second week coding challenge, and then third week's project. Whereas the fifth module is all just dedicated to your final project. Got it. Okay, cool. I want to talk about your final project in just a second. But um, so, so you mentioned that, you know, you're in the classroom eight hours a day. Who were your instructors during Flatiron School? Were they like graduated students? Were they, uh, you know, industry professionals? Like who was actually teaching? Yeah. Um, so the coaches that we had did graduate from Flatiron School. So they're uh, quite used to the, the pace of the course and there were just a huge support for doing the lab work as well as kind of the intensity of it. Um, but then the lead instructors that we had to kind of well, lead on, <laughs> on the instruction uh, were industry professionals. Okay, cool. That makes sense. That's really nice to have like both perspectives, to have some people who are there who have like been through the process and understand how hard it is. And other yes. people who are like true experts. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good. Um, it was a very good support network when we were there. And when you think back to your cohort, like, was it a diverse cohort? Did you feel like there were other women there? Were there people with like different backgrounds, or did you feel like it was all kind of um, typical people who are in tech, just kind of studying? <laughs> go into tech. <laughs> yeah, no, ours was such a mix. Like we had people from all different kinds of backgrounds. There were a couple of people that had um, kind of more of a technical background, but for the most part, it, it was just completely varied. Like there were a few other people who had come from, well, there was one classmate who had come from like working in the diamond industry. Uh, there was a couple of teaching assistants. There was somebody who worked in the music industry. Like it was, it was very, very varied. <laughs> and um, our cohort as well was quite unique in, uh, we were 50% women. Um, I know that for the most part, it is still um, women don't make up quite as high of a percentage within tech, uh, but at least for our cohort, we were like quite, uh, quite balanced as far as like a, a man to woman ratio. That is, that's really cool to hear. Um, I think like in the larger boot camp industry, it's usually like 60, 40 men to women, um, mm -hmm. which is better than typical, uh, the typical tech industry or even, you know, computer science degree programs, but uh, still isn't parity. So that's really cool to hear that you had a class that was half women, half men. Mm. So, okay, so you mentioned that in the final module, you do your final project. Um, mm. And so I'd love for you to share your screen and show us what you actually built. Great. This is beautiful, curatorial. Thank you. <laughs> so Erin, um, tell us about Curatorial. Give us like the elevator pitch. What did you build here? Uh, so I built an online uh, image searching app. So it is uh, seeded by the Harvard Art Museum API. And then I also use the Google Vision API to tag the content of the images. So you don't need to have a background in art history or know anything about art. You can just search for the content of the image to explore uh, a little bit more about the art world and uh, the different types of artwork that the Harvard Art uh, API has. That is so cool. It's really neat that like you have a background in art and you built something um, <laughs> that obviously will contribute to the art world. That's really neat. Is this like something that you wish that you had been able to do when you were working in the art world? Um, yes and no. It's not specifically related to some of the roles that I was doing. Um, what I really wanted to do for the final project, because I knew that we'd have just the, the two and a half, three weeks to just completely focus on it, that I kind of wanted to do something that I just wanted to like have fun with. <laughs> so um, I do wish that we had something uh, that was kind of a little bit more open and like accessible to people who probably don't know as much about art. 
um, but yeah, it's it's kind of a little bit more in like the the fun realm of things that I just kind of wanted to like build and play with. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you mentioned you had two to three weeks to build this, and did you do this on your own or did you do it as a group? It is a completely solo project, so I did wow. build it on my own. <laughs> very impressive okay can you take us through the features of the project like what did you what does curatorial actually do yeah of course um so first what i will do is it looks like i'm still logged in so i'm just going to go ahead and sign up so we've got some front end validation here and i'm going to join with let's see don't think i've used this email before so you can see that little front end validation that just popped up. And here we are. So this is your dashboard. So this is kind of like what you'll see um, to keep track of the artworks that you like, the little shows that you uh, curate yourself and then uh, other users as well that you can follow. Um, so here, because you've just signed up, you can see that we've got a little Easter egg. So we don't know your name yet. So we've got a little prompt. So I'll just go ahead and say that it is Aaron Five and Jason. And Hello World is my biography. So now it knows who I am. So it's welcoming me. Uh, hello, Aaron Five. So now what we can do is we can either explore um, some random images. And um, so to kind of explore the images that I have is uh, just a general explore page. But these little tags here do describe the content of the image. So you can see that rather than needing to search for um, like a painting or some like abstract expressionists or art movements or things like that, we just have the content that we can explore. So clicking into the individual artworks page, uh, we have a description of it. And then we also have these tags as well. So you can kind of search around. Uh, if, you're, if you are interested in sculpture, it seems to have picked this up. Uh, otherwise, if you have heads, we've got a couple of artworks that just contain heads. Um, and then to put that in an exhibition, you can either just pop it into next vision there and automatically it just puts it on or if you prefer you can also uh, put artworks in new exhibitions as well so just going back to that explore page uh, I've got a few uh, random images and then I'll just put this one factory I'll put this into a new show and just submit that. So now cool. we have that, that's just available. And again, we just pop it straight in. So one of the main components as well that I built around this is the uh, search functionality. So this is searching for those tags. So I can see that machine is something that I've got available. So I'll just search for machine. And here we are, it looks like we've got one. And you can also search for things like pink. Uh, it seems to have picked up quite a few different colors. And oh, there's no pink, but I did account for that. So I've got a little Easter egg here as well. It says you're an original that matches pink, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, this is uh, kind of a way that it will uh, take you around and some of the different artworks. So that's uh, just one opportunity to kind of just explore the different things that the Harvard Art Museum has and uh, create exhibitions around it as well. I love it. And there's kind of a social aspect of it too, because you can follow other users and other people's exhibitions and that's awesome. So you used the Harvard Art Museum API and then what was the other API that you used? So the other one was the Google Vision API. So Google that is what um, actually does the tagging. So it will the search tagging. for them. That's awesome. And then what other tools or like technologies did you use to actually build it? Like 
which mm -hmm. what language did you use on the front end on the back end how did you build the the database of of art that you've got on the back end um yeah can you just walk us through that yeah of course uh, so the back end is a Ruby on Rails uh, API. So that is something that you learn as part of the course on uh, at Flatiron School. And then the front end is a uh, React, so JavaScript library. And again, that's uh, part of the course at, uh, at Flatiron School. So those are the two technologies that you focus on. And the, the design of the site is really beautiful. Is there, was there like a framework that you used on the front end to build this or um, is this all coming from your own design? Like how did you actually make it look so nice? Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, it is a uh, custom CSS that I built. So um, the sort of the first week of the, the fifth module, so where you are focusing on the, the final, um, uh, your final project. You have a week where you're not allowed to touch any code. You have to just sit and plan what the app is going to look like. So that was where I did just loads of mock-ups, um, loads of kind of just like uh, design. We used a program called Figma. So that was a way that you can uh, put together the different screens and how you think it's um, going to look. And yeah, and then from that, I just did custom CSS. That is very impressive. Um, and it turned out really beautiful. So that's awesome. So could you tell us a little bit about like a roadblock or a challenge that you faced while you were doing this project? You mentioned that you did it as a solo project. So what did you do when you ran into something that you didn't know how to solve for or um, didn't know how to fix? And yeah, how did you overcome obstacles while you were building this pretty big project. Yeah, there was definitely quite a few moments <laughs> of uh, obstacles and roadblocks. Um, unfortunately, it's just kind of par for the course. Um, so what I did was, um, at least for the most part, I feel like it was usually because I wasn't reading the air properly. I was tired. I was hungry. I wasn't just like paying attention to what I was doing. Um, so in those instances, it's probably best, or I found it best just to take a break. <laughs> kind of helps you really center. And then when you go back, then you can actually sort of look at it critically and realize, oh, I forgot to put the ending uh, <laughs> uh, parenthesis here. I forgot this little thing or the error message is telling me exactly what I need to do. Um, so yeah, I think kind of most, errors for the most part will will be solved that way but there were a few times when there was something that there was an error message that i'd never seen before I was trying to google it i couldn't find anything and in those instances i first I just reached out to my classmates and said to have any of you ever seen this before is this something that like i've missed like what should i do and then in that instance um if no one could could help, um, which there was an instance, like there was an error message that I just had absolutely no idea what it was and no one else did either. Was um, That was when I would just approach some of the teachers and say like, what, what does this mean? <laughs> what do I need to do? Um, and, and they were able to help uh, from, from that, thankfully. So we just kind of talked through like, oh, okay, this is actually what it means. You might not have seen this before. And these are the things to kind of uh, look out for next time. Cool. So did you get to showcase your final project at like a demo day at the end of the class? Or did you get to like show it off to employers? Yeah. Um, so they do have a, um, it's like a, a demo evening or a science fair. Um, so rather than like a full day, it's just in the evening. And that was um, an opportunity where um, they sent out invitations to people in industry, they put it out to the public, so if anyone was interested either on the course or was hiring, then uh, they, they were able to attend. So that was something that um, was, was quite helpful for, for me as well, because it not only does it give you an opportunity to um, just meet people who are interested in your project, but it gives you an opportunity to actually just talk through it as well and, and, and get to show it off. So. 
today you are a web developer at ArtLogic. Um, was your was someone from ArtLogic like at that demo day or at that final project day, or how did you get connected with them? Yeah, um, somebody from the company wasn't there. However, somebody from the Flatiron School um, Employer Partnerships team was. So he came up and uh, had a go with the project, and he was the one who told me that actually there's this company who just got in touch. Um, we think you'd be a really good fit. Uh, we think you should apply. And as soon as I saw their website, I thought, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is exactly what I want to do exactly for this company. Um, so I was so excited. And, and that was how that opportunity um, came about. And what does ArtLogic do? Uh, so they they do a few different things actually now. So I'm part of the database team. So um, it's a it's a web app that is uh, is a database for artists, collectors, uh, galleries um, to um, store and keep track of their artworks online, their sales, um, as well as do uh, sort of emails and marketing. And then they do also have a branch that. Uh, does websites as well. So custom websites for clients as well as uh, some templated uh, website options as well. That's amazing. And it sounds like that really aligns with like what you were doing before Flatiron School. It aligns with what you did your, your final project on. Um, mm -hmm. Did you get to talk about your final project? Did you talk about curatorial during your interview with ArtLogic? Like were they impressed that you had done a, your final project? <laughs> about an yeah. art database <laughs> yeah um i i hope they were <laughs> um but yes that was very very much a part of the uh initial um kind of i think what got me the interview in the first place and then uh for both of the so i had two interviews uh before i was offered the job and that came up during both of the interviews uh was very very much in depth about kind of what um sort of my my motivations for doing the project how i designed it you know how i built it what i would change about it for next time um and yeah so that was a a huge proponent for kind of what was what i think helped me ultimately get the job and so how did flatter in school prepare you for like actually doing the job search you mentioned that they connected you with this uh, with this company, Art Logic. But did you do like interview prep? Did they help you with whiteboarding things like that, like getting you ready for the actual technical interview? They they do. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really get an opportunity to actually use a lot of the the resources that they had because it was so quick. Um, so we we had the the showcase on the Thursday on the Friday we had our graduation and by the Friday afternoon I had the offer for the interview so Monday first interview Tuesday second interview and then Wednesday job offer it was just it was so fast <laughs> um, but yes they do have a full uh, career services uh, track that that does prepare you for um, both the kind of cultural interview they do also have uh, resources for doing the technical interview practice as well that's amazing. I guess that is a, that's a good reason to not have used the, yeah. <laughs> the job search advice or curriculum because um, you had already gotten a job. Yeah. So now you've been at ArtLogic for actually maybe a month and a half or two months now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, one, one, yeah, a month and a half. Yeah, a month and a half. Congratulations. <laughs> well, so tell us like what a web developer's day to day looks like. What are you working on? And is this, I'm curious, since you went from being in like the art world and kind of on the creative or management side, like, do you like what you're doing day to day now as a, mm -hmm. as a web developer? Is this what you expected? Yeah, I, I love it. I'm so happy. <laughs> like, I'm so glad that I made the, the change because I feel like this, the kind of work that I'm doing just feels like it, it sort of fits a little bit more into kind of what, what I want to do as, as a job. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy. 
Um, the day to day, so at the moment I'm actually, I'm still in training. Um, so I had to learn a whole new language. Uh, the company uses Python. Um, and I'm still just kind of getting up to, up to scratch with the code base that they have as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a couple of months until I'm like fully immersed in like the day to day, which is going to be kind of a little bit of, um, uh, like bug fixes when they, when they pop up every so often, um, any sort of custom requests from some of our existing clientele about like new features or suggestions, the ways that we can improve the product. Um, so that's going to be a little bit more of my day to day in a couple of months time. Uh, once I'm, I'm fully up to date with, uh, the, the code base that they have. That's really cool. I mean, it's amazing that you learned Ruby on rails and JavaScript at Flatiron, and then you started a job in Python, mm -hmm. completely yes. different language. Yeah. Um, it's awesome that art logic has like a training program or can help you like ramp up in a new language in their code base. Mm -hmm. Um, have, have you found it difficult to learn a completely new language or do you feel like you learned the basics and now you can kind of learn whatever language you want? Yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's, I think I was a little bit sort of unsure about like, oh gosh, is this going to be quite difficult to learn a new language? I was a little bit familiar with Python prior to learning Ruby. So I felt like, oh, actually, uh, it, it wouldn't be too bad to make the transition over to Python. But yeah, I mean, it is, it is sort of like as soon as you know the fundamentals, like this is you have in your mind of like okay so this is how i would do it in ruby um this is what i need to look up to know how to to write it in in python but ultimately it is just about problem solving so as long as you kind of have that uh the problem solving skills and you sort of know how to go about um uh writing what, what you want to write like you can you can just look everything else up it's not too bad Looking back, is there anything that you wish you had learned at Flatiron School that you now find that you're, you know, need to know or that you're using a lot um, in the first couple of months at ArtLogic? Um, there hasn't been, probably not anything that's come up at work, but there has been some things uh, when I've been trying to do like personal <laughs> projects that I wish there was probably a little bit more focus on, which is um, sort of the idea of like the, the path in on your computer and like kind of more of that like lower level stuff that you need to set up your developer environments, um, which that actually with Python was a, a huge learning curve when I was trying to prepare myself for the job and then I was trying to set up my local environment and I just spent so much time like just going around and around in circles because I thought oh, okay I remember we kind of remember we talked about this but it was so fast just like at the very beginning of the course um, which yeah I think a little bit more focus on that would have been helpful at least just for my <laughs> personal experience but um other than that it was it like it, it was just it was quite vast actually for how much we did learn in that short amount of time that um yeah I suppose this kind of that like double-sided of well yes I wish you to learn this but physically could I actually have taken it anymore sure. um so yeah it just kind of yeah, I suppose it's all good, but it's, yeah, just <laughs> to balance that yeah, out. Yeah, well, and I always hear people ask, like, you know, once I graduate, then what should I focus on learning, you know, on my own, or what should I brush up on before I start applying to jobs or before my first day at a job? And that's really great advice. Some of that lower level programming stuff um, mm -hmm. is, is a great thing to kind of focus on or brush up on. Um, so maybe you just answered this question, but what's been the biggest like challenge that you've had over the last few months in your journey to learning how to code? I mean, if you look back, it's been about six or seven months since you started, uh, started this journey and now you have a new job and you're like working in a new job as a developer. So 
it's a pretty cool success story, but um, what's your advice to uh, other people who are about to embark on this? Like, what challenge should they expect? Yeah, um, actually, it was something that I, probably the biggest challenge was something that I was not expecting at all, which was uh, not so much of like the, the physicality of like, of coding and like learning these new languages and things like that, but also just kind of um, having confidence in yourself to go in and to, to do it and to know and like, like feel faith in yourself that yes, I can actually do this. Um, that was like, that was actually probably the biggest challenge for me was trying to like, just have that confidence to be like, you know, this is who you are. This is the the path that you want to take and to just have confidence and, and faith and like, you do actually know what you're doing. It's okay to like, you know, put your hand up and say, well, actually, you know, I feel like maybe it's this and like not be afraid to sort of make mistakes as well along the way. Um, so yeah, I think that was definitely one of the biggest challenges and biggest surprises on my on my journey was just yeah having confidence and um, to to go and continue to pursue it. How did you find that confidence? Like, how what do you say to other um, folks who are in that similar kind of position that you were in six months ago? Um, like, do you just have to kind of tell yourself the narrative, like, you know what you're doing, <laughs> this is your path, or yeah. is there something that um, Flatiron School, like, told you to, to do to kind of get over that <laughs> imposter syndrome, or what's the yeah, secret? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I think that was part of that one I mentioned earlier about the coaches and, like, how supportive they were and how they've gone through the, the course themselves, like, they were always the first to be, like, <laughs> so this is an imposter syndrome talking you you are fine you're here you're still in the course um you know don't worry about it as much and like also just speaking to other developers and know that we are also just kind of on the same in the same boat um yeah it's been really helpful to like speak to some of my other uh the other people in my cohort when i've gone to meetups and met with other professional developers and so my colleagues as well just like you know how did you find this when you first started there's been a, quite a few um other people as well who i work with who did uh do uh boot camps as well like not just flat iron but like all like all all the boot camps <laughs> um so yeah it's it's uh, it hasn't actually been that uh, it feels like such a unique experience of like oh but it's just me it's only me all alone it feels this way but um no it does seem to be pretty like industry-wide and just know that like just go out speak to other people know you're not alone and in, in feeling this way it's okay like and that that has been like a huge help <laughs> wonderful well i think that's the perfect place to end unless there's anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up Erin um no I don't think so it's aside from just yeah if if you're thinking about doing it you know don't be afraid to go out and like speak to other people who have done the course we're always quite happy to to welcome new people uh into the industry and talk about our experiences so yeah don't don't let any uh feelings or uh imposter syndrome stop you from doing what you really want to do Amazing. Wonderful. Well, Erin, thank you so much for joining us and showing us curatorial. Um, it is so cool that you used your background in art to create a product that had to do with your art background and then actually ended up being something that you could talk about in job interviews. Um, and congratulations on your new job at Art Logic. Um, and, <laughs> and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we choose the subjects of these Q&As based partly on your comments. So uh, leave us a comment below and let us know which school you'd like us to interview a graduate from next in our next video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, Erin. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.